saints, we're in a we're in a we're in a great time, and 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 I and I stand in agreement and agree with Apostle Michael. You know, uh, the ministers. We you know we 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 keep in contact with each other through all this that's going on, but we haven't really fellowshipped as much. And and Friday was really one of the times I had come to the intercessory time of prayer and uh, sat and listened to the panel. I I seen. Uh, a God's prophetic psalmist, Andrew, and then today, you know, I got to say hello to him and hug him, but we didn't talk or anything, and um, and we didn't talk too much or anything about it, about uh, what was going on today, but I want to let you know that the, the title of this teaching is Exodus Anointing, <laughs> and uh, I, was, I was rejoicing, you know, I thank God that we're always on the mark because of Jesus, see, he's on the mark, and uh, and, 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 of course, as the, the worship came forth, part of that song was, I am who you say I am, amen? Yeah. And that's, that's the teaching right there. And another part of that, and I wrote this down because I thank God for it. He says, when I open my mouth, miracles and breakthroughs, I have the authority. This is what we're talking about today. This is what God is releasing. I truly believe, and I'm going to share this with you right now. We're just going to jump right into it because the anointing's already here and God's already moving. But I want to open up in the Word of God in Psalms 100, and I know that we're all rejoicing in this one. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are we and we and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Amen. And in Psalms 18, my favorite, 118 verse 24 says, This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And I thank God that this is a great time for us to be here. I mean, I'm rejoicing. We were here Friday. I couldn't wait till Sunday. I wish Friday was Sunday <laughs> because I am so thankful that God has allowed not only those that are here, but those that are watching to be a part of this miracle that he has already done. Amen. We're going we're gonna to be talking about that today. But uh, earlier this week, the Lord says to refocus. And I know all of us eyes have been upon Jesus, but God says, I want my people to refocus back on my son Jesus, who he is, what he's done, what he can do, what he, well, he will do, amen? So if I may, I, I, I'm, and this is the question God put before me. He says, so what have you seen and what have you learned in this last year, God is saying? Well, you know, this is what I've learned, saints, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I learned that he's still on the throne and he's ready. And he's asking us, are we ready? And you're going to hear that through this teaching today. Are you ready? Are you ready to let God be God? You know, God gave me a revelation the other day. He says he's 90% and we're 10%. He just needs 10% of us. Sound familiar? He only needs 10% of us and he does the 90%. So we never have to be concerned if we are well able or if not, God is well able to use us. Amen. He's able. And even as we sang today, as, as God's prophetic psalmist brought that teaching forth, you know, how could God use us, you know, but he fixed us and now he's ready to use us. Amen. And so I, I just want to, can I, can I just let us focus on Jesus here? And can I, can I tell you who Jesus is, that he's my Jesus? He's the king of kings, the bright and morning star. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and he's the last. He's the rock of my salvation. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the lily of the valley. He's the healer of my soul. And he's the great I am. See, we need to be reminded who Jesus is. I tell you, when you start focusing on Jesus, everything else is a blur. May I go on? May I, may I go on some more? How about this? He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's my Redeemer. He's my Deliverer. He's my El Shaddai, the Son of God, my Savior, the Holy One of Israel, Hosanna in the highest, the mighty warrior. He's my God. I belong to him. We belong to him. I'm a child of the Most High God. We are the children. That's who we are, saints. That's who we are. And God says, when you know who you are, the confidence comes. Amen? In that song, the confidence comes. We're in the new season, God's season. 
No more seeing. No, listen to this, saints. There's a new anointing coming. It's here already. And it's for this season. No more, saints. Are we going to see the needy and just say to them, be blessed? We're going to start saying, silver and gold I have none. But such as I have give by thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and take your place in God's kingdom. Rise up and be filled, saints. That is what God wants us to know today. Rise up and be filled. Hallelujah. This is God's word for us today, his people. Those of you that are here, those of you watching, this is God's word to you today. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. I give you the authority to trample on sickness and diseases and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's God's word for you today. I have another word for God for you today in Matthew chapter 7, verse, chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leopard, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And saints, God wants you to know, freedom you have received, freedom you give. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says, for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Hallelujah. God is going to do what he says he's going to do. God spoke prophesied to us before we even knew him. He said, the work that I have begun in you, I'm going to fulfill it, God is saying. All he asks us to do is just say, I'm willing, Lord. You know who I am. I know who I am. But you're willing to use me. I am willing. I, many times I pray that. I said, Lord, if you're willing to use me today, use me. Whatever you want to use me. And all God is asking is for a willing vessel. Amen. Are you ready, saints? Because he's ready. We are to be like Jesus. Amen. Now, you may say, well, brother, how can I be like Jesus? I didn't say that. He said it. And he says in his word, Jesus said, I in you and you in me. Amen? And so I want to share with you, if we are going, now he wants us to be, we are going to be like Jesus. And I'm going to show you in the word of God, because see, when you speak the word of God, that comes to pass. And so the word of God, I'm going to show you what Jesus did. And he says, I'm in you, you're in me. So you can do the things, and we're going to do even greater things, amen? And so the word of God says in Matthew eleven five, 5, this is my Jesus. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. That's my Jesus. 1 John 3, 8 says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Luke 4, 18 says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me to preach, to heal, to proclaim freedom, and to open blind eyes. Let's say all that together. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, and you just agree with me. And those of my brothers and sisters that are on the live stream, say it. Yes. Say it with them. You can put some thumbs up. You can text it in if you want. But let's say it, saints. Let's say this together. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. To preach, to, preach. To, heal, to heal, to proclaim freedom, to proclaim and to freedom. open blind eyes, open blind and eyes. to set the oppressed free. The oppressed Amen. free. Amen. Amen. That's our purpose, saints. Our purpose. We are to build up, and we are to speak and proclaim life. Amen. Uh, can I get some background music? Would it be possible? Just a little, if it's possible. I, I just love to hear that. I mean, it ministers to me. I, I love it. I mean, I believe there's 24 7 uh, music in heaven all the time. And it does, and it won't distract us. It won't distract. I believe part of that also, it just, it just makes, it reminds us that God is with us. You know, I like singing all the time. I'm not going to sing today. But I like singing all the time. And I've come to realize it, it makes me realize that God is with me because who could put a song in you but God Himself? You know, and, and saints, those of you that know me, I don't care if I, I don't sound good. I may think, you know, I may, I, I may think I don't sound good, but you know what? This is how you're supposed to sound when you're in heaven. 
the way you are, who you are, amen? So when you get to heaven, you're going to say, wait a minute, these angels, I thought they sang good, but we sing good because we're alive, amen? The Spirit of God dwells within us. So praise the Lord. You know, I, I'm just happy. That's, I'm a happy man, and I praise God for who he is. If Matthew chapter 15, verse 30, another miracle of my Jesus. Again, we want to be like, we are going to be like Jesus, and we're going to be like him not because of us, but because of what he's going to do. Because all of us here can testify, we are a lot closer to becoming G like Jesus than we were when we became born again, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, don't say, well, bro, I got a lot of mistakes. We all do. I'll be the first to raise my hand. But I know I'm a lot closer now than what I was when I first got saved. And so were you. And we're just going to increase because Jesus is increasing in us. Amen? And in Matthew 15, 30, it says, Then a great multitude came to him, speaking of Jesus, having with them the lame, the blind, the mute, the maimed, and many others. And they laid them at, the, at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Amen? Are you ready? Are you ready? You have been authorized by Jesus. He backs up his word in you. Mar Mark chapter 16, verse 17 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name you will cast out demons and you will speak with new tongues. Amen? Now I know that that tongues is the Holy Spirit tongues. But God told me today, I want you to tell them they're going to start speaking my language. They're going to start speaking like I speak. New we're going to speak with new tongues, God's language. We're going to speak with power. We're going to speak life. And we're going to speak as it is so. We're not going to speak and say, I hope it's going to happen. We're going to speak and say, it's already done. Amen. Yeah, but brother, I don't care. It's already done. I'm speaking what God is speaking, and God backs up his word. That's what he says in his word. He goes, I watch over my word to perform it. And when we speak God's language, which is his word, things that be not are as they are because God said it. Amen. And I'm just going to speak what God speaks. No more hesitation. No more room for doubt. And then verse 18 says, and they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so God is saying, get ready because as you start speaking my language, you will lay hands and they will recover. You will speak the word and they'll receive it. Amen. Today, God's word, his mighty working deeds and miracles are being built up in you. Amen. God's, speak God's language and things will change. You want things to change? Let them start here first. Speak God's word over your life. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. I'm a child of the most high God. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. He's my victory. Amen. All these things, the battle's not mine, but God's. But the victory is mine. We speak God's language. Things are going to start changing. You're going to start changing. Because, see, God is not going to use... Does, see, I know that God does it all. We don't do anything. But God wants to partner with us. We have to do something. Amen. Say, well, brother, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have a minister's license. I don't have a church. You, do you have one of these? If you don't, we'll give you one. But this is a start, saints. Open it up. But brother, I don't really understand what the word said. I never was brought up in church. It's okay. Let the, this, you know what the Bible, the, you know what God says about his word? It will shape you and mold you to be what he wants you to be. So you want to be shaped the way God wants you to be shaped? Keep on reading it. It will shape you and mold you to what you want to be. Amen. And so be encouraged that God is still on the throne, saints. Saints, and in John chapter 6, we're going to see some more miracles. Can I, can I give you some more miracles? Because see, see, the word of God is what cleanses us. That's what it says. Now you are cleansed by the word that has been spoken unto you. And when that word cleanses, it builds you up. And it builds you up so that when God says go, you won't hesitate anymore. You won't think, well, does God really want to use you? Yes, he wants to use you. You think he puts his son in you, that he won't use you? If God wants to use you, he's going to use you. But we need to know he wants to use us. And again, God puts the confidence in us. God puts the, the desire in us. Amen? He does the work because the flesh profits nothing. But the spirit man keeps on going because it's the spirit of God that's alive in us. Amen? And in John chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, it says, there was a lad here who had five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Verse 10, Jesus says, make them sit down. Verse 11, Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks, gave the loaves and fish as much as they wanted. That's my Jesus. See, 
whatever Jesus has, he's going to multiply it. And I like that verse because it said they got to eat as much as they wanted to. I like, I like eating. I like eating. I don't like just eating and say, and then I like to rest a while and eat some more. And it said that they got to eat as much as they wanted. Jesus goes, whatever you want, I'm going to bless you with whatever you want. Now, we don't have to limit God to just the food. It's everything we need. How about my, my will is to do the Father. My food is to do the Father's will. So whatever we need, Jesus is the miracle worker. We, we, we sang it today. Miracle worker. Amen. And in Luke chapter 22, we know this story. When they came to get Jesus, the multitude came to get Jesus. Judas was betraying him. And, and the servant of the high priest was about to lay his hand on Jesus. And one of Jesus' uh, uh, disciples got a sword and cut off his ear. And you know what my Jesus did? Luke twenty two fifty one. 51. Jesus touched his ear and healed him. That's a miracle right there. That's what my, that's what my Jesus does. I mean, come on, saints. I'll raise hands for all of us here and all of us on live stream. Don't, wouldn't you want to do something like that? I mean, the first thought that comes into my, oh, I want to do something like that. But immediately the flesh rises up. It says, oh, why? You want recognition? And then, and then you, know, you know where I go? I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Raise up that person to do it. Raise up that person to do it. See, we are to pray like that, see? It's not, not, I mean, we want God to use us, that's good. But when God puts in your heart these signs, miracles, and wonders, you know what my desire is? That God will use his servants. You guys, Lord, bless them. Let Use them, Lord, use them. That God would use them too, amen? Because God is more than enough, saints. And in Mark chapter 7, verse 34 and 35, then, and Jesus, this is Jesus speaking and healing the mute man. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, be open. Immediately the ears were open and his tongue was loose and he spoke plainly. It said immediately, saints. God wants us to start believing immediately, now. Not, I'll heal you, go with the doctors, see what they say. Immediately, yeah. the now. We're in the now, saints, yeah. and we had a teaching about that a few Sundays ago. We're in the now. We're on God's time. He's not in time, but that's the only way I can explain it. We are on God's time right now. Everything we see Jesus do, it always happened now. But in Scripture, we've seen that by the time the individual got to the place, that's when they got the, that's when they seen the manifestation of it. But immediately when Jesus speaks, the captives are set free in Jesus' name. Can I give you one more testimony of God's power? Just one more. I, let, let me give you one more scripture because these scriptures are setting me free, saints. And I'm getting to read them all over again. And so I know they're going to set you free. Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Then Jesus moved with compassion. Now remember, in order to do what Jesus does, we need to have compassion. It said that, he, moved, he was moved with compassion when he seen the multitude, when he seen the people. And so, so I believe God's going to give us that compassion. And, I, and I'm going to share a prophecy with you here later that God gave me. And that's for everyone here, God is saying. For you personally, when it is being read, see it and receive it as God is speaking to you personally. Because God's going to do this. We need this in order to be who God has called us to be. We can't do it with our intelligence. We can't do it with our gifts and talents. We can't. We, it's, it's not by might. It's not by power. It has to be by the Spirit of God that does it. And all he's ever asking all of us is just be willing to do it. He will put in you the desire to want to do it. He will put in you the ability to do it. You just have to submit yourself to him. And so today God is reminding us that he's doing it. The compassion of God is going to come upon us to where we're not going to see somebody and just drive by. We're going to stop, get out, and bless them because that's what God says to do. Amen? We're not going to say, let me wait till I get home, and then I'll put that person in my and get in my prayer closet. Your prayer closet is wherever you are. Just start praying. Just be the vessel he called you to be. God's not asking you to, to pull over and stop on the street and, and start praying. Just pray where you are. And if you don't know how to pray, if you think you might get distracted speaking words in, in, your, in your language that you know, start speaking in the heavenly language. You think the Holy Spirit's going to be limited because of your words? No way. When he functions you to speak out, he's ready to move. And with many times, uh, many times he moves that way. You know why? Because then you don't know what you're praying. Because then you start lifting yourself up. Oh, I look at Lord. The, the great words I had. Look at how I remembered all those scriptures. Oh, that person's going to get healed because I remember that. God says, no, you're gonna, he's going to get healed because you allowed me to use you. Yeah. See, let's just let God allow to use us and speak as the, God wants us to speak because the Holy Spirit is the power of God. He brings the results. So when the Holy Spirit gives us the privilege 
and uses us to pray in, in, the, in our heavenly language and speak a word of healing, speak a word of deliverance, speak a word of freedom. What a privilege it is, but he does the work. And saying some of, this, some of these miracles that God is going to do through you, you may never see them until you get to heaven. And you'll be wondering, wow, look at all these little, little extra jewels on my crown. And God says, remember when I asked you to pray and you didn't ask me why you just prayed? That's why. There was somebody that needed help. There was somebody in trouble. You didn't know them. I didn't have time to explain it to you. But you were led by my spirit and I was able to intervene. Because See, God intervenes through us. We are God's mouthpiece on this earth. You know, some people say, well, I, when I got born again, how come God just didn't take me to heaven? Well, because there's others that need to be born again, and God's using us. And saints, yes, yeah, sometimes God might have you pray for somebody one-on-one -on -one or a, a group of people to receive Jesus Christ, but he doesn't have to do it that way all the time. Didn't he say greater things shall we do? We don't have to always be one-on-one. -on -one. We just have to be shamara katira matona mana mashatara maka hola mama, and a multitude can get saved. Because it's not us, it's the Spirit of God doing it. And God said that there is going to be a wave of the Holy Spirit that is going to come, that's going to touch his people, and you're not going to say one word. You're just going to be the vessel he uses. This is the power of God. Man does not get glory in this. God gets glory in this. And this is where God, he's, everyone in this place, he has chosen you. Everyone that's watching, he has chosen you to be that vessel. If you would be that vessel, he's going to ask, he's going to ask you at this end of this prophecy, will you be that vessel? So will you say yes? I pray you would say yes. Because all you need to do is say yes, and God will do the work. Hallelujah. That wasn't even part of the teaching, but it gave you, he gave it to you. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So it said that he stretched out his hand, and he was moved by compassion. He stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing to be cleansed. Amen? You know, we, we hear... And I truly believe there's a, there's, a, there's a cleansing that is coming to God's people, the church. God is cleansing his house. He's delivering his house. And it's going to start in Jerusalem first. You know, sometimes we think, oh, Lord, you're going to reveal all that bad stuff. No. I'm going to reveal it to you. And then I'm going to burn it out. I'm not exposing it to where I could say, look at them, look at them, look at them. And then everybody sees your faults. God knows who belongs to him. And, and there, is some, there is some that God is going to expose because of their wickedness and they don't want to give it up, but you are not of them. And so when God says, I'm going to clean, cleanse my house, I'm going to deliver my house, he's not saying I'm going to put your stuff out there for everybody to see because I'm going to let you see it. And then I'm going to burn it out of you so you could be who I called you to be. Because I, I, I call for a perfect bride. He's going to do it. I'm the glory. I'm the lifter of your head. Jesus is our focus, amen? He's the one we're supposed to focus on. We belong to God, and he's our deliverer, and he's our defense, amen? And so uh, as, as God's prophetic psalmist opened up that door and wider today in that song of Exodus, I'd like to read to you from Exodus. I'm going to read the, the whole chapter 3 to chapter to verse 15. It's, it's, a, it's a little lengthy, but just listen, saints. I want to encourage you to listen. And, and, it's, and God is setting his people free. And we are God's spiritual Israel. Amen? And so as I read this, I never seen it this way before. But God says, as you hear this, think of it as now. Think of Israel as you. Think of Egypt as the world. Think of, think of the enemy and the taskmaster as the devil himself. But God Almighty is faithful, amen? And in chapter 3 of Exodus, let's, let, let's start in chapter 2, verse 24. No, excuse me, 23. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Uh-oh. How about this virus trying to take us over? Now it happened that the process, process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage and they cried out and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob. 
And God looked upon the children of Israel, that's you, and God acknowledged them. Chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Moab, the, mount, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but there was but it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now go turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw, so when the Lord saw that Michael, Ivan, and Andrew turned aside to look, God called them from the midst of the bush and said, Michael, Ivan, Andrew, and they said to him, here I am, Lord. Then he said, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrows. So I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the place of the Canaanites, <laughs> the Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression which, which the Egyptians have oppressed them. Come now, Michael, Ivan, Andrew, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Michael, Ivan, and Andrew said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Egyptians, bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. So he said, I will certainly be with you. And this, this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve them in this mountain. Then Moses said, indeed, I will come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they shall say to me, who is, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Michael, Yvonne, and Andrew, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, more, moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. I come to you in the name of Jesus. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For all live to him. Hallelujah. I never read that before like that, saints, but God gave me that today. And God, did you know that God's word says, I add and I take away. He added his servants' names to that today. Because he wanted to make it personal. And he wanted 
his people to know that he is mindful of all our things and he cares for us amen and I want to share a little bit about you with that word exodus what it means and most of us know it means the coming out God is delivering his people but it also means to exit out of and we are exiting and see it starts first with us how can God set the captives free when we need to be set free we need to know because of Jesus we're free but God needs to clean us up you know what I mean he needs to clean stuff up right and so to exit out God means that that bondage of lies is gone it means exodus means we're going out we're coming in we're going out but we're coming into God's presence it means to withdraw we're leaving the past behind it means to exit and you know what exit means it means the gate God shamars over us He's our gatekeeper. We're passing through the gate. And God will guard us, protect us, and preserve us. We are surrounded and protected by God. And we are well able to take the land. In the name of Jesus, are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, I like that. I, I, I like the title that God gave me, the Exodus anointing, because only God can do that. Only God can anoint something, and it will come to pass. And so God wants you to know, get ready, saints, because as much as God has been teaching us what it means to shamar, the shamar of shamar is watching over us. We're protected. Whatever, whatever God reveals this year in 2021 in the Shamar school, whatever he reveals through us, we're protected. Whatever he exposes things of the enemy, he, let, he wants us to know right now. You're already protected. I'm guarding you. I'm protecting you. I'm preserving you. Walk through that gate. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Can I share a prophecy with you, saints, yeah. that God gave me? Something's happening here. Some of you, are, you're not going to have to even be touched because he's already touching you. My people, my chosen... A new season for you. You're never going back, only forward. New level for my people. Keep pressing in. Your breakthrough is here. Anointing of transformation is here. Me in you, heaven of light of heaven. With my words in you, you will stop the plans and schemes of the enemy. This new anointing in you is holy, pure, powerful, able to destroy, tear down all obstacles of the enemy. I am, all, I, am already, I am ready to move upon this earth, this planet that I have created, to restore life, to bring back, to bring back freedom, to show myself mighty, to show my wonders to remove the hate, the division, and the blame. No more will my creations fight against themselves. I will open their spiritual eyes to see who the real hater is. There will be unity in my body. Yes, it is my body, and I am the head, and my body shall be holy. A change has started, a new season. Your Redeemer, your provider, your healer, your king is doing a new thing. And I will use you. I will equip you and prepare you. I will breathe upon you with my breath 
and fill you with more of me, more faith, more authority, more love, more power. The same power that raised my son will be in you. The same power my son operated in will be in you. It is in you now. Just one breath from me will bring the change forth. You will know me as I am to be known. The true living powerful who always was and who always is. The great I am. This power of mine will be for only a season. It will come upon my chosen people only for a season to bring back holiness and reverence upon this world. This power will unite my chosen to be one, just as my son and I are one. In this change of mind, there will be unity, healing, a clarity of mind, freedom from oppression, fear and worry there will be no more spiritual blindness no more lack of understanding my people my creation whom i love who choose to serve i will touch this earth with the power of my love and i will choose you my beloved to be a part of this season of mine only believe in your heart and let me use you to release the power through you to set the captives free. Are you willing? Just be willing. All I need is a willing vessel. I, the great I am, can do this. It is a small thing for me to do, but I choose you to use you, my chosen, my beloved, I created you in my image. I rejoice to show you my power. This power of mine is wonderful, beautiful, breathless, amazing. It will change you forever. I rejoice to give you this power. You have seen it before through my son, Jesus. Now let me show this power of mine through you to the lost and to the hurting world. I love you, my beloved. I love the earth that I created for you. I will show myself mighty upon this earth to save, to rescue, and to bring out of bondage my people. Will you believe? Will you run this race? Will you speak life to the hopeless? Will you show them my glory? I have called you for this purpose, to be my body, to care for one another, to serve one God. I hear the cries and I see the sorrows. I must rescue my people. I will rescue my people. Will you be my hand? to help them up? Will you be my arms to comfort? Will you be my feet and legs to carry them? Will you be my eyes to look with my love? This is my love. It is beautiful and lovely. <laughs> Say yes. Say yes, use me. I will use you, my beloved, says the Lord, your God, your creator, your friend. I will use you for this end time. Just be willing and I will use you for I know your hearts. Receive my word today and run this race for the victory is already won and the captives have already been set free. <laughs> thus, thus says the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
can we just hold off for a couple minutes here? I don't want to jump into anything else because God's moving right now. Hallelujah. We'll be closing this service uh, in a little bit here. We'll be shutting down this live stream. <laughs> but I want to I want to I want to release a, a prayer for those of you that are on this live stream right now. That God is well able. And if you just receive everything that he gave you today, Right there where you are, it will transform you. God is not held down by any walls. The same spirit of God that's here, it's with you. And so I want to ask God to release his blessings upon you right there where you are. We're going to get ready as we close the slice room to pray for those that are here. But I want to encourage you, those that are watching, get here. Get here. There's something about a point of contact that it just, it, it sets us free. If you can't, God understands. But if you can't, get here. Get in the presence and let God be God. And so I want to just thank you for jumping on today on this live stream and And remember, tomorrow, I mean, you're just going to get a double tomorrow. I mean, we might not even leave this place. I mean, I don't want to leave it now. I mean, I can't think of anything better than just staying here. But I want to bless you, number 1623. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Amen? Amen. So those of you that are live stream, shalom. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.